Hey folks, I'm having a little technical difficulty with my <laughs> with my phone here, so hang in there. Hey Vaughn, hey Sister Anna, maybe y'all can help me. Tell me, tell me what you see, Sister Anna. Is is my um. Is my picture sideways in the transmission? I'm having technical difficulties, unfortunately. Hey, Vaughn, can you tell me if my... Uh, I'm sideways. Okay. All right, y'all give me a second. I'm going to try and fix this. I don't know what, how in the world I'm going to fix this. Hold on. Sorry. I found something new this morning, and obviously it didn't work very well. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Hold on. Am I sideways now? Oh, goodness gracious. I need a 13-year-old to tell me how to fix this. I'm okay now. All right, hey, y'all, give me a second. I'm working on this. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Well, I got to tell you, I hadn't been this frustrated in a while. All right. Everybody good? Can y'all see me? You know, I know you can't see me, but the main thing is, can you see the, the painting? You see, Okay, I, I don't care if you see me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good to see everybody this morning. All right, so let me tell you what I'm doing this morning. I'm in our church library, uh, which most of you know. Uh, the painting behind me is uh, Rembrandt's Return of the Prodigal Son. It's one of, uh, it's a poster actually, it's not the actual painting. It's one of the most beautiful um, uh, biblically based paintings I have ever encountered. Um, and uh, that's going to be part of our reflection today. So the order of service for noonday starts on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer. If you are uh, following along online, you can go to BCP uh, online and then click Daily Office and then click an order of service for noonday. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and will be forever. Amen. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Thanks be to God. So the daily office is taking us through Matthew's Gospel and the reading for today is from the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels charge of you, 
and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Here ends the reading. So today's um, gospel passage, we have a very familiar passage about uh, the temptation of Jesus by the devil in the wilderness. This happened, as you know, right after his baptism. Um, the, uh, the temptations are, are detailed in, in Matthew's gospel, but the, the ultimate temptation, the real temptation, is for Jesus to put himself in the place of God. In other words, it's a temptation of ego, uh, a temptation of pride, uh, putting ourselves in the place of God. Um, I think that's what the prodigal son did in that parable that Jesus tells about the young boy who asked his father to give him his inheritance, his share of the inheritance, and then he went off and blew it all in what uh, the Bible calls loose living, uh, and then came back. Um, uh, the, the temptation of the prodigal son was, um, was really to put himself in the place of what his father wanted, uh, what his family needed, and, um, and ultimately what he was made by God to be and do. Um, so uh, that's why I thought this, um, this painting would be uh, nice to have in the background today. And I also have a poem that I wanted to uh, read. This is called Voyage of the Prodigal. And it's a poem by Mary Lowell. Again, the, A Voyage of the Prodigal, a poem by Mary Lowell. It was not so dark the last I looked. The stars there were could still be counted, and the moon was a frail lost ship, not the queen she is now of this indigo ocean. Off there, so far away, I can only believe, maidservants are lighting the porches as brother with his staff drives home the herds where father wept when I begged to go free. He would not know me now, a swine man's boy, stripped of robe and ring, and his body man would look away, then meet me from ground to the knee. Still, I will go while this darkness wears the memory of his eyes as a harbor and runs through the shadows to that glittering port where the least of his servants are free. I see him now as last I saw him. On the way I left and am now returning, running to meet me as the first strobes of sun throw off every shadow between us. I think that's a great image of broken relationship and the desire for broken relationship to be mended. And um, certainly that uh, the, the temptation uh, that Jesus had in the, in the wilderness was to break relationship with God. And certainly uh, in the parable of the prodigal son, uh, the... Um, the relationship between the son and the father were broken. But the father in that um, parable is always waiting and willing to reconcile with his son. And it takes the son turning around and going back to the father to do that. Um, I think that's um, certainly something that is always um, available to us with God and with others. Uh, to be open to reconciliation and also uh, to turn toward reconciliations ourselves, uh, reconciliation ourselves, but maybe particularly in Eastertide. That is uh, something we can do 
uh, make it our intention to do. And then especially while we suffer under isolation and COVID, um, doing those spiritual disciplines that, uh, that give us peace and grace and repair relationships uh, that we're in, um, especially with those we love and especially with God. Thanks be to God. Continuing now with our prayers. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Blessed Savior, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved. For your tender mercy's sake. Amen. In our prayers today, we pray for Linda, for Sister, Sister Anna, for Susan Bales, Bob and Laura Barnes, the Brenner family, Avery Browning, Jerry Buck, Amy Caponetti, Carol, Suzanne Elliott, Anna Frazier, Carlton Fuller, Doug Goode, Ann Hansen, Jimmy Hunter, Gordon and Kay Irwin, the Jenkins family, Keith Kelly, Terry McCrair, Louise McDaniel, Sam McDutt, Anita Medlock, the Moore family, Jan Neese, Chris Panel, Sue Pyers, Demi Perez, George Pipes, Joe Petake, Poteek, Norma Riggs, Diane Scott and family, Kathy Schutman, Carmen and Ryan Smith, Jan and Mark and Jan Vinci, Martha Williamson, and Harry Wood. In our ongoing prayers, we pray for Lotta Barrett, Paul Bergeron, Charles Garys, Becky Hare, the Nelson family, Ned and Beth Patterson, Sue Ellen Rail, and Melanie Staten. We do pray for Bob Barnes, uh, the repose of the soul of Bob Barnes, that he may go to strength, from strength to strength and strength in a life of perfect service. Bob died uh, two mornings ago. A prayer for our COVID situation. God of healing and hope, in Jesus you meet us in our places of pain and fear. Look with mercy on those who have contracted the new virus, on any who are vulnerable, and on all who feel in danger. Through this time of global concern, by your Holy Spirit, bring out the best, not the worst in us. Make us more aware of our interdependence on each other and of the strength that comes from being one body in you. We pray through Christ, our wounded healer. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, folks, I'm sorry about the technical difficulties at the beginning, and uh, I hope you all have a great day, and we'll see you soon. Blessings.